All righty. So considering the, uh, the agenda was sent out yesterday in the email, I'm assuming everybody's had a time to look at it. So uh, accordance to our agenda, section one, subsection B, move to approve the agenda. Anyone opposed to the agenda? Please make yourself known now. Hearing none. With that, move on to announcements. I'm going to strike my announcement. I just said that I want to remind everybody that of, of our duty here, above all else, is to look out for the students and equity and accessibility um, and build something ideally that will go on for many generations to come. So that will be my statement currently, and I'm going to pass the floor to my colleague, Paul. Paul, go ahead. Thank you, Dan. So um, I'd just like to say a few things about student government. Um, I've continued to think about what was talked about last week and the week before, um, and I just wanted to get these words out. Um, I know we all probably have very different ideas of what student government should be. I know we're all interested in very different areas of study here at MSU. We all come from varied backgrounds, and we all have very different objectives here in student government. Per what I promised my fellow students during my campaign, I intend to be transparent, so I will tell you what my objectives here are. I believe that the barriers to higher education should be done away with so that all people can have access to knowledge and the opportunity higher education affords. I understand that higher education has been a side of struggle for women, LGBTQIA plus individuals, oppressed nationalities, people who've experienced the injustice system, the poor and the disabled. We must recognize these struggles and work to address them if our university is to have an equitable educational experience. I believe higher education is a period of cultural exploration and that it's important we uplift and give recognition to the cultures that have been historically marginalized if we are to break the tradition of Anglo-centric education that our institution has peddled in. I believe food is essential to education and that we must work to combat food insecurity amongst our student population. I believe democracy is essential and that we should practice and promote democracy in all of our work. We should engage the student body and reignite the civic participation on our campus to level seen in previous years. I think uh, students should have a place to swim, to speak to the pool for a moment, because um, it's a particularly fun and very accessible form of exercise uh, for, um, for many people. Uh, I believe the student employees and other members of staff and faculty are underpaid for the work they do in the face of inadequate wages and a rising cost of living, and that the university must consider the economic well-being of those who do the work of maintaining our university and in teaching many of our courses before they consider giving a pay raise to the already well compensated administrative faculty. I know that at times the antagonisms between different points of view on this council can feel quite sharp as they have in the last few weeks. Uh, this is because these issues are undeniably important to society and our university, which are inextricably linked. We must not shy away from working to address or discuss these issues. The mission we've inherited from the previous council supports these objectives as we are supposed to advocate for the interests of all students, enhancing the university experience by unifying and empowering all students through a shared governance model for our uh, communal document. Uh, we must build a community of diverse ideas, dialogues, and individuals which leads to a high quality, valuable, and transformative education opportunities for all. Um, like Justice Thurgood Marshall said, I think that we um, should reflect on what he said here. Uh, where you see wrong or inequality or injustice, speak out because this is your country. This is your democracy. Make it, protect it, pass it on. In this spirit, we should work to reimagine what's possible with our student government and make our democracy and keep it. So that's all I've got. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Paul. And we certainly will reimagine possible while speaking out. Thank you. So per our agenda, section two, roundtable committee updates governing documents committee paul hello everyone um respectfully the governing documents committee just has a, a little bit of updates to report um we met yesterday at three o'clock again for our second meeting and we continued to discuss a few items and we uh, united on a few particular ideas that i want to highlight uh, the first of which was this notion that the document the communal document is very difficult to read um, I know many of us haven't even read it in its entirety, and I don't blame you. It is a daunting document. Um, it's in really small font. There is stuff all over the place, and stuff is repeated in some portions. So we talked about um, creating a structure 
like Article Article One Preamble, Article Two, or maybe a preamble, then Article One, Article Two, Article Three, where we discuss specifically like you know name, object, mission, um, members, meetings, officers, and amendments. Um, and so we, we united on, on on organizing the document in that way. And so we're working on a rough draft that'll that'll have essentially the contents of the existing communal document reorganized into our, our easy to understand and easy to easily formatted articles that'll have like hyperlinks that you can click on to jump around the document. So it'll be easy to navigate. Um, we united on striking a few portions that talked about demanding reports of all the departments and all the schools on campus. There's a section that says we demand monthly reports from every department, and then it lists every department. Um, Re really poignantly put out, uh, uh, mentioned that um, we really ought to turn that concept on its head. You know, instead of demanding these uh, reports from these organizations or different schools like we have, we should um, ask these uh, organizations, what is it? student government can do for you and or we should reach out to them and ask for this information as opposed to demanding a monthly report. A uh, monthly report that I um, there's no uh, evidence that it was followed last year and so this is another reason we want to um, strike this portion as, along with the portion that discussed mandatory um, trainings. There, there are these mandatory trainings from I believe those Africana studies and some other um, departments like GITA um, and part of the problem we had with this uh, section wasn't the notion of um, needing to um, educate people on these subjects, but rather the idea that we haven't been having these trainings. And so uh, we ought to strike from the document um, elements that aren't being practiced so that we can be honest about what we're doing here. Um, and just to uh, kind of keep this short and cut off the rest of it here, um, we're continuing our work on the Governing Dawkins Committee. Um, for so far, participation has been a little light. There's just been like three or four of us on these meetings. And so I really do want to see uh, more people input if possible, because I want the final product to be something we can all agree on. I'd hate to see, you know, four people on this council create something that everybody else really didn't like, you know. So even if it even if it just amounts to a comment about something you've you notice in the document that should be revised or something that you think should be in the document that's not there already, we're all ears, even if you're not on that committee. And everyone's welcome to join if they haven't already. So that's all I've got to say for the Governing Documents Committee, so we don't go on too long. Thank you. And sorry, we're meeting again next Thursday at 3. Thank you, Paul. Um, say cab, Stephanie, then Mike. Hey, y'all, can you hear me? Yeah, scared. awesome. So again, we have no updates. Um, that's all that I have. <laughs> no updates this time around again. Thank, thank you, Stephanie. Mike, do you have anything to add? I do, yes. So um, I've actually been in contact with um, the SACAP reps from CU Denver, as well as the SACAP secretary, um, Nicole. Um, just some general updates for um, next, because SACAP is set to meet in August. Um, we plan on like as a little team bonding thing for SACAB, um, all of us can get together and do um, like a, kind of like a night with some dinner, um, kind of some team building activities, what we wanted to kind of work on this year. Um, and we have me and Stephanie are allowed to invite a few people from the council as well. They want to meet some um, representatives from CU Denver or CCD. Um, so that's coming up, I believe, on the 18th of August. Um, but I need to get back to Nicole on that. Um, I'll have more information next week. So all as that, um, CCD is still trying to figure out who their SACAB reps are. So um, once that's settled, I think we'll be all set, but I'll have more probably next week. Thank you, SACAB representatives. All right, on to Board of Trustee. Gabe, are you here? Yes, hello. Hi, Um, I have no update. Thank you, Gabe. Social Media Committee. Paul? Um, so we've done a lot in the last week. We got all our uh, recordings uploaded to YouTube and we've posted QR codes in our office and on our posting board outside so that folks can access that. We'll be adding it to our social media platforms we have active right now, like our Twitter. And I wanted to say that we've already got some good engagement on our Twitter. Um, not from the public at large yet, yet, 
but from the university itself, the university and President Davidson and the coach of our of our basketball team have all liked a lot of what we're doing. You know, I, I, made, I made a post that showed the different resolutions we passed so far and how busy a summer we've had. And I got a lot of love and a lot of support from the university um, on Twitter, at least. And so I say we get the rest of our social media active. We're still deciding on a day to um, hold meetings for the social media committee. Uh, it looks like we're thinking probably about Wednesday. You know, if Wednesday doesn't work for you, get in there and vote and vote for a different day. Um, but I welcome uh, anyone else who wants to join this committee. And personally, I just wanted to say that we ought to elect a chair for the social media committee so that we can have structured, um, or I guess more of an impetus to move on some of the things we're doing. Um, yeah, that's all I have to report for the social media committee. Go ahead, Alex. I know also the uh, social media committee is getting the Canva Pro stuff ready to go so we can make um, flyers for events. Um, I do need the login information for Instagram. Um, and then so, and then I think what we have left after that would be the WordPress website. Um, so yeah, uh, we're making some pretty good headway. Um, oh, and then also the Met Media has been talking about doing a podcast. Um, and so I know that some ideas have been tossed around in the office about what we would do for a, for a podcast as well um, that would be local and on campus. Um, so I just wanted to report that because I think I think it's pretty good. Paul. I uh, agree with you there, Alex. I honestly think this podcast initiative should um, be something that we nest under our social media committee. And I did want to really quickly thank Mike for joining us. Uh, he's done a lot of good work in pushing us along on the WordPress and updating the website. Mike's actually been in communication with staff at CMEI, and we now have a form with which we can update the website. So we'll be sending in a form to add these new links. Thanks to Mike. Go, Mike. And um, and yeah, no, that's uh, that's everything I wanted to say to that end. Um, what do you what do you want to say, Mike? I was just going to mention um, this form is very helpful for us for updating the website. But once uh, CMI is kind of up fully running, it will be at all time. I am going to press send on getting the WordPress actual access to it because I mean I appreciate what they'll do it for us, but I think. It's more important that we make these changes ourselves and we have access to the website. So um, that's something I'm going to push for. But this form is a good first step in us meeting the sunshine laws requirements that the last council kind of got um, hit on last last year. So that was the big purpose of getting this website change and our meetings on the website so everyone can see. So that's all I have, Dan. Thank you, Social Media Committee. On to Subsection E of Section 2, Colorado Student Government Coalition Representatives. I'll take that. We have yet to meet with the committee chair, and we have not heard any updates as to when the coalition meets officially starting um, for the year. So as soon as that happens, we'll make updates. But um, yeah, we'll have more updates coming soon. So hang tight on that. Policy Advisory Committee, Bree. We met yesterday uh, to go over the inclement weather policy again. They're honing it down to what um, it will look like for synchronous, asynchronous online and in person for closures. And they're looking to give instructors more leeway with being able to call for closures during that time. So hopefully it'll be finalized soon and then it goes to the president for affirmation or in acceptance. I'll let you know when it is. Thank you, ma'am. SGTSAC Budget Committee. Mike, do you have anything on this? Um, I do not right now, but I do have some. Oh, actually, I do have some stuff that's um, incorrect. Um, we, as a TSAC Budget Committee, through the resolution that we passed, that gives us a fund for us to use. Um, we're in the process of pack passing two different packages for the office, one being a consumables package. Um, so we have some snacks in there for people who come and visit us, um, coffee, tea, stuff like that. The other one will be a um, office supplies package. Um, they're in the process of getting approved. And then um, Armando, I will send you all the information of the approval process and um, a spreadsheet of everything. Most of these will be, get, be getting through Amazon. 
Um, but I will report on what everything is next week once it gets approved and stuff like that. So yeah, those will have hopefully two new packages, one for consumables, one for office supplies that we use to kind of um, furnish the office a little more. So yes, that's kind of what I have so far. Thank you, Mike. On to subsection H, faculty student affairs committee. Uh, Re, next to Nick, Re or Naomi, either way. Um, I actually have a question for Re about this. Um, have you gotten any updates, Re? Because I don't know if maybe they just don't have my email or if we're just not getting anything. We have not since the very beginning. Um, they are not going to be meeting until fall. So I um, will make sure if I hear from them, I let them know that you're we're both on this committee together. Yes, please, because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I just haven't gotten anything. I think they know, but I'm just like double checking that I'm not like missing anything. But yeah, you are missing nothing. I promise. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, we have no updates. Thank you. OK, thank you. And Naomi, I can also uh, email the whoever the, the, the contact is for that committee. Make sure that you're on there. So no worries on that. Um, COVID response committee. Paul, the COVID response committee has not met again. Uh, or we, the response committee hasn't met again, I'll say. And uh, I would just refer you to our previous update. Um, nothing new. Subsection J, section two, student travel committee. Um, there has been a few presentations last week. We pretended one didn't, didn't get the vote, our scoring in on time. So there are some often invited or that we are invited to these different presentations. And as they happen and we score, we will keep the council updated. All right, so it looks like Dr. Barone, you have the floor. Or Armando, advisor uh, updates. Yes, is she here? I know she's here. Um, but, I'm here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> if you Sorry. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I was trying to find my mute button. It wasn't working. <laughs> um, I do have a couple of updates. Um, one is related to a request for representation um, on the president's cabinet. Um, so previously, there um, has always been a student government slash TSAC member um, who has represented and been on president's cabinet, and they are going to begin meeting in August. They don't have the time yet, but it will be, I believe, August 18th is the first meeting. And so um, Ed Brown, who is uh, Dr. Davidson's chief of staff, has asked for me to relay the message and ask um, who would be sitting on president's cabinet um, last year because of the rotating chair situation. Um, I think it was really complicated and hard and we kind of, it, it was rotating and I think it was a little bit challenging, but it's up to you all how you want to do that. Typically it has been the president um, or the co-chairs or, you know, whatever, but um, just wanted to, to see what you all thought about that and wanting to see who the point of contact would be to help coordinate that um, with Ed Brown. That's one thing. The other thing is I just sent you all um, the calendar of the EDI, um, Equity, Diversity and Inclusion um, Programming and Cultural Heritage Months and those types of things that will be happening during the year. This is something we've been working on for a long, long time, several months now, um, to try to help streamline and coordinate our efforts and I know there's been a lot of conversation this summer. I know Naomi specifically had um, shared her interest in wanting to do that work. And so I just emailed that calendar. It is kind of still in draft mode. There might still be some revisions and updates to it. So we're not sharing it broadly and widely just yet, but I did want you all to, to have it on your radar um, and to let me know if you have any questions or would like points of contact, I can definitely connect you with those folks who are kind of leading that work, depending on what the event is or um, the area of interest. So I wanted to offer that. And then finally, um, Armando and I have been meeting weekly and um, we are in the process of putting together proposals for um, Dr. Simpkins and 
Dr. Tatum, um, and I, I hope Dr. Davidson will be joining the dinner um, in September that we put on your calendars. I think it's a Thursday. I think it's September 8th. Is it September 8th? I think so. Um, so just wanted to give you all a heads up that we um, will be coordinating that and Armando's doing some research on places and, and where to go and what we want to do with that. But please hold that time on your calendar. And I think it's going to be an, a great opportunity for you to get to know and network with our senior leaders. Um, I think that's it. Oh, and just reminder about trainings or planning retreat or whatever y'all are going to do. Um, just a reminder on that. I think I mentioned it last week. That's it. Marmondo, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, she, she had a lot of good stuff. So I definitely want to emphasize the, the trainings. Um, once you guys do get that down packed, please let us know as soon as we can. You know, Dr. Verona is a busy woman now. She has 2.5 FTE, so she is a, she's going hard over there for the university. So um, let us know ahead of time if we can. Um, the dinner is September 8th, so just make sure mentally note that for y'all. We do have everyone in attendance, so all 12 of y'all, us, and then some people for the prison staff. Um, biggest things I wanted to touch on, thank you to the 10 people who already filled out that Qualtrics in terms of payment information. I'm just missing two people. I will follow up and send a quick message over um, after this meeting for those two individuals who are missing that. Um, once I get that in, I can start the process and hopefully we can, we're all good and HR doesn't screw any of us over for that, but it should be good. Um, and then another thing I wanted to put on y'all's radar is the multicultural student welcome. That will be, give me one second, I believe it is on September 1st. I'm trying to get my calendar. Yes, September 1st from 11 to 2 p.m. Um, Dr. Brown and I talked it over and we do want to invite um, TSAC to come show representation, you know, be there for the students, all students. So September 1st, 11 to 2 p.m. Uh, we're looking to be like a more engaging and interactive kind of session. So something that you can either give to the students to take away or they can interact with you all to learn more. Obviously, conversation is going to happen, but um, some things I initially think of is like, I don't know, maybe give them a rock to paint with an affirmation or something and they can walk away and it's from TSEC, but something just so you're a little bit more interactive with the students at the um, multicultural welcome. So once we get a little bit more information, we're still finalizing that event, we will send that out to you. Uh, did you have any other comments on that specific thing, Cynthia? No, thank you, Armando, for mm -hmm. reminding me of that. Um, there will be more information. We're working on getting that communication out, and I'll make sure that it goes to TSAC. But the Multicultural Student Welcome is for our identity-based centers and programs and our multicultural Greek life yes. student organizations, as well as our academic departments. And so um, we thought TSAC should definitely have a place there to engage with Various students will be having food and um, engaging activities, music. It'll be fun. Um, so that'll be on September 1st in St. Cajetan's. Um, and it is on the calendar that I just sent you. <laughs> More info to come on that. Yeah, cool. And other than that, I just want to apologize. I've been kind of MIA in the office lately. I got COVID this week, so I've been out clearly. Um, but I've been remote and working from home, so it's been, I feel perfectly fine, so I'm just bored. <laughs> um, but if y'all need anything, just let me know, shoot me a message. Um, for the Canva thing, I wanted to give an update. I was looking at Canva's website, and apparently they give educators and education systems Canva for free. So I did apply for that appeal to see if we can get it. If we don't, then I'm just going to pay. I'm going to give them until Tuesday. If they don't answer, I'm just going to pay for it. Um, but that is in the works. I did not forget about y'all. And then, yeah, whenever y'all get that spreadsheet with the Amazon wish list, just let me know. We can make that happen. Are there any questions for us? No, not that I have. Um, right now, does anybody else have any? No. Hearing I none, just, okay. I just, Go I just ahead. give one update. We do have one applicant for the executive assistant position. So... We're moving, we're moving on up. <laughs> um, <laughs> if y'all have any friends, please let them know. I don't want to just interview one person, hire one person because it's the only one we got. I want to get at least a collective of three to four if we can. But I know that the school semester is approaching. Obviously, the faster the better. 
But that is all for us. Um, all right. Well, that, per our agenda, we're done with reports and updates. So on to, on to the next part. I would like to move that we, um, in in response to Dr. Bar Dr. Braun's request for representation on the president's cabinet, I'd like to move that we choose our chair um, to be that representative. And however we vote in August, however the, the new chair or co-chairs will be and how often it changes, hopefully as infrequently as possible, that position will serve on the president's cabinet. Chair recognizes Ree's main motion to have the chairs be the representation on the president's cabinet. Is there a second? I would second that motion. The chair, um, oh, sorry. chair recognizes Paul's second on Ree's main motion. I would also like to offer a friendly amendment that it be um, our co-chairs, plural, that sit on the on the president's council. So I'm with you on, I, on the idea, Ree. Um, I would just like to be both co-chairs. So there's been a men, amendment proposed to the main motion. Is there a second? We need to I think well, we need. Here. basically yes. Reed, you accept the amendment to your motion. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, move on to vote. Okay. Stephanie. Stan. Mike. But yes. James. Abstain. Bree. Aye. Gabe. Alex. Aye. Naomi. Aye. Chad abstain. Paul. I vote yes. I recognize myself. Yes. All right, let's tally the vote. I'd just like to clarify, based on Dr. Baron's statement, she says, I need to ask if you can have two seats on the president's cabinet. I think the idea is that the co-chairs, there would only be one representative on our council at any time, but we're covering that seat. As we switch co-chairs, right? Switching co-chairs, yes. So how many? All right, so because of the number of abstentions, the vote does pass. The motion passes. What? Okay, so the vote, the motion did pass because the abstentions lack, count as not votes. So on to the agenda now. New business, section three, subsection one. CR 22-5 resolution for an accountable council. Paul. I I would motion that we introduce the following resolution. Um, and uh, that is CR 22-5, a resolution for an accountable council. I wrote it with Mike and we collaborated with Dan, Ree, Naomi, and Alex on this resolution. So um, yeah, I motion to introduce this and to have it read. I second that motion. All right. The chair recognizes Paul's main motion to read to read the resolution, and the chair recognizes Mike's second on the main motion. Go ahead. So this is called the resolution for an accountable council. Uh, like I said, it's written by myself and Mike Warner. Uh, I collaborated with Dan, Ree, Naomi, and Alex, uh, and, and it's been endorsed by James Vargas and Gabe or Gabriel Trujillo and 
The abstract reads as, as follows. We, the student government of the Metropolitan State University of Denver, believe that a government should be accountable to the people it represents. We must be held accountable to the student body in our roles as student advocates for the Metropolitan State University of Denver. We consider violations of the university's code of conduct and a dereliction of one's duties as a student advocate to constitute a hindrance to the mission of the university and the student government, also known as the Student Government Student Advocacy Council. We, ad we recognize that our members are human beings capable of making mistakes and learning from them. Members are accountable for their roles as student advocates for our student body, in addition to the role as students. Their studies should not subsume their advocacy work, just as their advocacy should not subsume their studies. Subs uh, application of this accountability framework should recognize this. The mediation of conflict within our council should take a form consistent with restorative justice practices. We, the Student Government Student Advocacy Council, will implement and uphold this accountability framework. In the event of alleged misconduct or alleged dereliction of duties of an elected council member, a motion may be made to create a committee to mediate and determine a resolution that addresses the incident in question. This committee would be known as the Accountability Committee and will constitute a temporary committee that would last the duration of deliberation on the allegations and would have a very specific focus on the allegations that led to the creation of the committee. The Accountability Committee will operate under a model of restorative justice, giving full opportunity for members of the council to correct misconduct and hold themselves accountable for their role as a student advocate. The chair of the accountability committee will be voted in by the general council at large, and their role will be to appoint four members of the accountability committee, totaling five members to facilitate the committee in finding the facts. The committee would also present the facts found during their investigation to the general council, along with their recommendation on how to proceed. The accountability committee will be empowered to call meetings and to mediate conflict, requisition materials relevant to the conflict and consult the university's Department of Student Conflict Resolution Services for assistance. Upon the dereliction of the role of a council member, the stipend of said member will be considered forfeit and will be redirected to the council budget. The accountability committee and advisors will determine the duration of stipend forfeiture based on factors such as how long the role has been derelict or the membership status of the member in question. Once the advisors have reached a determination, the accountability committee will deliberate with the advisors to determine the correct course of action. Our accountability committee combined with our advisors will make up two parties responsible for the adjudication of misconduct in our student government. And when in agreement, they will have the power to censure, suspend, withhold stipends and expel members of the council. Whereas our student government, the Student Advocacy Council is elected and accountable to the students at the Metropolitan State University of Denver, whereas Failure to adhere to MSU Denver's code of conduct or to conduct one's duties as a student advocacy council member constitutes a hindrance to the mission of the university and the student government. Whereas we recognize that our members are human beings and are capable of mistakes and learning from them. Whereas members of the student government, the student advocacy council are accountable for their role as student advocates for our student body. In addition to their role as students, their studies should not subsume their advocacy work just as their advocacy work should not subsume their studies. Application of this accountability framework should recognize this. The mediation of conflict within our council should take a form consistent with restorative justice practices. The university's Department of Student Conflict Resolution Services outlines what this would look like. Restorative processes address conflicts or oh, whereas restorative processes address conflicts or wrongdoing that have resulted in harm. Restorative practices actively engage all parties, the responsible parties, the impacted parties, and the community to collaboratively, collaboratively address what happened, the needs of the parties, and how those needs can be addressed. Whereas restorative justice values the voice of the participants and allows parties to share their stories. Restorative justice also focuses on how the parties were impacted and repairing the harm caused. Lastly, restorative justice elevates active accountability, meaning that the responsible party must not only recognize and take responsibility for the harm caused, but must be willing to repair the harm caused. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, the student government of MSU will implement and uphold this accountability framework. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, in the event of alleged misconduct or alleged dereliction of the duties of a student council member, a motion may be made to create a committee to mediate and determine a resolution that addresses the incident in question. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, this committee will be known as the Accountability Committee and would only constitute a temporary committee lasting the duration of the deliberation of the allegations. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, the Accountability Committee will operate under a model of restorative justice, giving full opportunity for members of the council to correct misconduct and to hold themselves accountable to their role as a student advocate. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, the chair of the Accountability Committee will be voted in by the council at large 
Their role will be to appoint four members to the accountability committee, totaling five members to facilitate the committee in finding the facts. And they would present the facts to the general counsel along with their recommendation on how we proceed. This recommendation will be voted on by the council at large before beginning final de deliberation with our advisors. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, the accountability committee will be empowered to call meetings, mediate conflict, requisition materials relevant to the conflict, and consult the University Department of Student Conflict Resolution Services for assistance. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, upon the dereliction of the role of student advocacy counselor, the stipend of said counselor will be considered forfeit and will be redirected into the budget. The accountability committee and the advisors will determine the duration of stipend forfeiture based on factors like how long the role has been unfulfilled or the membership status of the member in question. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, once they have reached a recommendation, the accountability committee will deliberate with our advisors on the correct course of action. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, our accountability committee's recommendation, when approved by a majority of the council, combined with our advisors, will make up two parts of the adjudication of misconduct in our student government. When in agreement, they will have the power to censure, suspend, withhold stipends, and expel members of the council. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, this resolution will constitute the new accountability framework for our student government and will be added to the communal document and our member's handbook, replacing the previous defunct progress logs. Thank you. You note in the chat, oh. Dr. Braun's comment about her suggestion that this is to be shared with the general counsel and the assistant dean, director of behavior and conduct. Yes, definitely, definitely be shared. So uh, I've noted that. Th thank you, Reed. Um, so is there any discussion? Is there any discussion on this resolution from either side? And if there is, let's hear, um, let's hear the opposite. Let's begin with the opposition, opposition side of the debate. You, okay, hearing none. Like to, um... Oh, Stephanie. Hi, I'm not in opposition per se, but I would definitely like to share it with the Restorative Justice Committee and with the General Counsel before moving to adopt it into mm -hmm. our communal document, just because I feel like it's another resource to make it that much better. Um, that's where I'm coming from. I like it. I'm not, not. I'm not opposed to having it. I would just like to get some more feedback on it. Um, and I'd like to add as well, considering you know this, there was a, a semblance of this document that, that you picked up, and you know, in trying to make it better, I think it's it would be in good stead for us to run it past them and get feedback and because this is what they do, so. Sure, sure, and and I'm gonna recognize myself on this one a little bit. Um, sure, I, I I see what what is being said there, but I think it's best that we move to pass this resolution and then then share that with them. I mean, as meanwhile, there's no framework for accountability, um, and, and that absolutely needs to, you know, I think needs to be some sort of accountability. Otherwise, it's a free for all. I just wanted to speak uh, to that. I agree with you, Dan, that we should pass it. I remember we did set a suspension limit of August 1st for our accountability structure, so we will have to submit progress logs if we do not pass this today. I think, uh, while I agree with you all, that we ought to include the re restorative, well, the um, Student Conflict Resolution Services Department. Um, I think that we can pass this resolution and make and we can amend it in the future or we could enhance it in the future. Um, really, I do think that if anyone notices any problems with it now, I would be happy to hear any friendly amendments to improve the document, but I don't think we should hold off on passing it simply because it could be better in ways that we haven't you know, outlined. And so if anyone has like a specific criticism of anything that it's lacking or a problem that it has, I'd be willing to hear it and modify it today. But I definitely think we should continue discussion on it and uh, and then vote on it today. Thank thank you, Paul. Uh, let's see. It looks like uh, let me see. Hold on. Alex, go ahead. Uh, 
and yeah, I was just going to add to the um, amending it later portion of what Paul was saying. I think if we were to pass it today, we could have that report ready to go. Uh, and then we run it by the restorative justice folks. And then if they have any revisions, we just make an amendment to it after that uh, and then vote on it again um, in the future. Just so there is some sort of outline now in, in the present. Uh, I that's that's what I that's where I'm at with it. Um, yeah. Thank thank you, Alex. Uh, Stephanie. Yeah, so I guess a question that I would have or just adding, giving me some clarification would be um, who decides who sits on this? Is it kind of just like um, volunteering? Hey, I really like this idea. I'd like to um, sit on this committee. And then who is deciding the chair? Um, what if no one offers to be on this in the future? Um, and what that would look like. Is it an automatic, like this needs to happen at the beginning of the semester, the co-chairs decide? Um, those are some questions that I have. Paul, go ahead, yep. I can specifically answer that. So um, the section, uh, I would just refer you to the last page, um, the fifth from the bottom says, the chair of the accountability committee will be voted on by the general counsel at large. Their role will be to appoint four members to the accountability committee, totaling five members. And so essentially, the chair would be a person who is either nominated volunteers for the role and wins an election for it uh, and in a vote that we would hold in this meeting that wherein the motion was made uh, and said person uh, we would we would want to vote on somebody who we had the confidence could pick out four other members of this council to um, meaningfully mediate this this uh, conflict um, in such a way that practices restorative justice and gives people an opportunity to um, to correct behavior or uh, to work on that stuff. I really, you know, when we were first drafting this, people talked about strikes, like a three strike rule. And we definitely wanted, we wanted to move away from that notion, this idea that, you know, if you'd make three mistakes, you're out, three strikes and you're out. No, we know how that has affected a, a lot of people in the country when it comes to the criminal justice system, and we definitely didn't want to replicate it here. So that's why we built it around restorative justice. But I hope I've addressed those questions you've asked, Stephanie. If I can, do you feel like that's um, a sufficient answer? Is there something you'd alter there? Yeah, no, I don't think I'd necessarily alter anything. I would just want more clarity because, again, what if the said person that is nominated for said position doesn't want it? Um, what's the backup there? So, since this is like our for sure like accountability system, right? Like I would just want that to be clarified. Um, I think I also what was I had another question, but I can't think of it. But oh yes, a time frame. So is this being decided over summer? Is this being decided during the fall? Um, how long should it take before this is decided and needs to be decided? Um, I would also want that to be added as well. Paul. So um, I don't think that um, anyone on this council for any position that we were to ever hold an election for would be forced to accept a nomination. Nominations are by, I think, definition uh, optional, right? Um, if I were nominated for chair and I didn't want to do it, I would say, no, thank you, not doing it. Um, same goes for this, the position of this committee. And I think it would serve us all well in the event of conflict to nominate someone with a vested interest in seeing it resolved. And so... Um, as far as the timeline on when we're addressing this, I think we really want to get this done before our um, before the suspension of our um, rules regarding the weekend or the weekly logs uh, expires, which is uh, I think tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So uh, unless you're speaking to when the um, conflicts themselves would specifically be resolved, like if there's a timetable for those. I think that that's just going to have to be settled on a case by case. Like some things are more um, more complicated than other conflicts, and some may require greater greater lengths of deliberation. I don't think we should necessarily put a cap on it. I don't necessarily think that um, limiting the amount of time people could take to address what could be a very serious issue in the future is a good idea. I think just giving them yeah, the flexibility sorry, to either I interject. I don't think maybe I didn't phrase my question well enough, but what I'm trying to ask is I would want that implemented into the document, right? So like into the resolution, like when this is going to be decided by when the new council comes in per 
academic year? Like, does it have to happen, um, like, July, I'm throwing out random date. It has to be decided by July 10th before August 1st, right? Um, and then what was my other, you had also said, oh, no, I'm not saying that someone has to accept the nomination. I'm saying, what if no one, I'm just playing like the what if scenario. What if someone doesn't accept their nomination? Okay, then what does happen, right? So like, since this is our for sure, um, like go to accountability system, I would just want the like, those questions like specifically answered in the document before we were to like automatically say yes. Oh. I uh, personally don't believe we, sh we need to specify that nominations be optional. Um, and then I would say that I, I propose this, the way this is written is so that it would just be a standing part of our communal document and our member's handbook. And so it's not like it would be active from July to June or anything like that. It would just, it would be a standing rule and accountability structure for from day one. And so, um, yeah. Thank you, Alex. I think um, I think some of the dilemma is that that Stephanie is talking about uh, is if no one wants to nominate themselves or run at all, uh, what will we do in in case of that? Well, the, I, I guess I don't quite understand the hypothetical, um, but I see what you're saying. I guess I don't I don't anticipate that. I don't anticipate that happening. Um, I also want to reiterate too, though, on August 1st, which is I think a couple of days, three three days away, we have a member handbook outlined with duties and things that need to be done. And so, um, yeah, I think it's a good time to definitely vote on that. If we refer it to another committee that's outside, we got to send emails and back and forth, back and forth. It'll be, it'll be a while. And again, we are a student council here allowed to vote um, on all of this stuff. There's no sense, I don't believe, in initially re referring our decision for approval of another committee, although working with another committee is is good once it's passed. Um, is there anybody else that has any? Oh, Naomi, I see you. Yeah, um, just kind of at Stephanie, she's kinda, uh, she mentioned that she didn't think she got her questions answered. So I just wanted to like kind of maybe see if this is like what she meant. I'm just asking, but um, so like, Steph, did you just mean kind of like, um, like you wanted them to implement these what if situations into, the document so that way if they come up then we already have a solution for them ready or do you feel like we we needed new like i'm just trying to like i because like yeah. i'm kind of curious because i didn't feel like they were really answered either basically yes and no i just like times like a time frame like this needs to happen by this date so then yeah. it happens for sure because if we're relying on this and it needs to happen you know so what I guess, let me be more clear, how I would do it is I would go in there and whatever amendment or whatever section and say, the person, the chair needs to be voted in by this time, just so then it happens. And then you add on to it and say, if it were not to happen, then this would happen. If the person isn't voted in by this date, then we'll continue on with another special election or until it is decided just so then it does happen because if we're relying on this and it needs to happen. Yeah. Um, okay. So like a time frame kind of situation. Yes, exactly. Then. Yes, Aren't Naomi. You? Thank you. I feel like I I'm being you. understood by someone. <laughs> That's I got you, what I'm trying to say. I just want a time frame so then it does happen because we can say, oh, well, it should happen, but that doesn't necessarily mean that someone's going to follow through with it. So I just want to make sure that it does happen because if we're relying on this, to keep everyone accountable, then I want it. To, I want to make sure that it works all like ninety nine percent of the time. Okay, word. So, um, guys, uh, how do you how do y'all feel about that? Um, I know this is kind of like the document. Like I reviewed it a little bit, but I think Steph does have a point. Like we definitely should have like time frame, um, like accountability rules kind of situation going on in there, so that way we see, um, you know, things getting put into action under those deadlines. So that way, like we're not worrying about like, oh, what is it going to follow through and things like that. I think she's got a really valid point with that. We hear you, uh, Mike, Paul, and then I recognize myself. Hey guys, so um, I actually do agree a little bit with what Stephanie is saying. Um, Stephanie, I pose this question to you. Um, this is a very amendable document. This is not a set in stone. We can make amendments to this 
um, as soon as tomorrow, if you wish, would you care to meet with me and help me make those amendments? I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? My computer is about to die, so I just had to run and get my charger. But um, yes, I was actually going to head down there. I don't know. If I have to go down to campus anyways today. And I know y'all be living in that office because I be hearing y'all be in the office. So if you're still going to be there today, um, then I'm more than happy to meet up. Um, tomorrow I can't and Sunday because I have a retreat for Sigma Lambda Gamma. So I can't be available those two days, but throughout the week, um, I believe that I'm free as well. So I know that's after the fact, um, but I'm more than happy to meet on Teams today just to make sure that it happens, if that works. Well, um, I just wanted to speak to a few more things that are being addressed. Um, I wanted to reiterate that if we do not pass this today, we will be responsible for creating accountability logs progress logs for the time that we've served on the council so far, including the time that we suspended the rules. Um, because as soon as it's back in in, in play, um, we will be bound by our handbook and we should follow through with our handbook. I think part of the problems before was that the handbook had a bunch of stuff that wasn't being followed. So I think the entire purpose of crafting this accountability proposal is so that we do have something concrete that does have um, the ability to uh, be fully accountable to the council and to our advisors. That's why the advisors are a part of it um, as a sort of checks and balance. Um, I think, you know, we need to hope for the best and plan for the worst. I don't really see nobody wanting to do it as a significant challenge that would be posed to this resolution. Um, because I think that's the kind of lack of accountability that this this is meant to address is people just not, you know, performing committee roles or not um, coming to meetings like consistently. I'm not talking about like missing a meeting on accident or something like that. And I also wanted to address the timing. Like if we limit the time that this accountability committee can go over an allegation, it could hinder a meaningful investigation over something, um, something really like, I just wanted to pose the hypothetical. I don't believe this would happen with this council, but what if, in three years, this council had members, um, some of whom uh, commit like an illegal act and or like assault someone. I would want us to be able to have a framework that allows them to take the time to meaningfully investigate what happened and and meaningfully address it without being stuck to like a two week timer or a two month timer. Because some of this stuff is just complicated. Like imagine if it was an assault. And there's some sort of pending court case or something like that. And all of a sudden, our timeline is out of alignment with what would need to be a, a resolved legal matter, right? I think that when we give this, when, when we are more general about what this accountability council will be doing, it is more capable of doing what we want it to do, as opposed to limiting it to like a two week time period. Um, yeah, that's everything I had to say about it. I mean, again, if we don't pass this today, we're writing accountability logs. So I would really strongly, strongly suggest that we do something about this today. Go ahead, Ree. I just wanted to suggest that we uh, can take a vote to agree in principle to this resolution, which means the details can be finalized, but we agree to the idea that this new resolution will be something we accept once we iron out the details. So. Does anyone have anything to say specifically about that? Yes. So, um, ahead, Naomi. yeah, so I, I think I, I agree. I think that we should just vote on it today to like, this is be like, this will be what we implement. We just have to work out the details, but I personally am not a fan of the logs. Like, <laughs> and it's not because like, I know they're, they're not very hard to handle. Um, you know, it seemed very easy to do, but, um, any little thing that I can save time on this semester, I'm really going to value that. So if I could just, you know, um, show up and show out and be, you know, the best that I can here, that would be great because adding on extra paperwork for me is just something personally I'm uninterested in. But like, of course, I want to be like held accountable for the things and that I do here in this council. So I personally think that we should vote yes on this today if you all are, of course, into that. Um, and then, yeah, what what uh, what Reese said, just go ahead and 
solidify the details later and then we can like if we need to go ahead and amend something on it um you know later and so forth but yeah um i, I agree i think we should just vote yes call it good i recognize paul and then myself i agree that we should vote on it um and that it should be a living document as all our documents are currently i think it should be noted that we can amend all our documents presently every one of them every one of our resolutions we have we have passed we can still amend today and so but the notion that we should pass an honorary resolution or a draft resolution or a hollow resolution to me sounds like a really really i i think that's a tricky road to go down because if we start passing resolutions on this council some of which we agree to entirely and we have the details ironed out and then some of which we you know agree to in in concept but we don't carry out then how are we to delineate between like what is like voted on and agreed upon business of the council and what is just air i don't want to i don't want this council to just pass air i want us to you know pass something concrete and so that's why i'm fundamentally opposed to the notion of a of a draft or any sort of a um an empty resolution so i motion to end debate is anyone opposed and then we vote on i second to i second that motion all right cool no one's opposed hearing none all right so you second Paul, are you, or Mike, are you seconding the motion to vote on seconding this I resolution? second the motion to end debate. I motion to vote on this bill yeah, call right now. Question. Call it to question. All right, we're on to vote. What are we voting, what are we voting on? No, you need to we're vote. voting on this resolution. Yeah, you need a second. Okay. Is there a second to the main motion? Is this going to be to have it as a living document or for the um, in principle voting? Every document we um, adopt is living because it can be amended in the future. This notion right. of a resolution that we agree to in principle to edit later is is not one that we've formally adopted, I don't think. OK, so, so that's what we're going to be voting on then. I second yep. motion in that. So we're voting just to clarify, Stephanie. So basically we're vote move, Stephanie, we're moving to vote on the resolution that was just read with the idea that all the doc that, that document and all the documents that we um, create are amendable and living documents always to be amended with the times that we live in. So that is that. Is that clear? Yeah. Naomi's got a hand up. Naomi, is that a new hand? No, sorry, I first take it on. I was trying to say yes, okay. sorry. <laughs> all right, we move on to vote. Let's do it. Stephanie. Mike. Yes. James. Yes. Bree. Aye. Gabe. Chad. Uh, uh, Alex. Aye. Naomi. Aye. Paul. Aye. And I recognize myself for a vote of aye. The resolution passes. Thank you, Council. Order, next order of business, CR 22-6 resolution to declare and facilitate fall. This is the co-chair elections. To facilitate the co-chair elections for the 22-23 school year, the framework. Mike, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dan. So yes, last week we passed um, a voice by voice vote that next, this next week, that would be, um, which I forgot what August that is. I think it's August 5th, I wanna say. Yes, August 5th. That is when we are holding our co-chair elections. So um, I know there's some differences in how they're held in the past. So I've written up this resolution to facilitate and um, exp or just get that process over with next week. So um, I uh, motion to read this document in full. I second the motion. Chair recognizes Mike's motion for a framework for the co-chair elections and the chair recognizes Paul as the second to Mike's main motion. Move on to vote. I motion we oh, read. The oh, amendment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Or I motion we read the resolution. Okay, that's what I meant. 
All right. So, um, yes. Yeah, so um, I'll start off the abstract here. So <clears throat> we, the student governments, begin this second session as the Student Advocacy Council of Metropolitan State University of Denver with two acting co-chairs. We must elect our co-chairs of this council for the upcoming semester. During our last meeting on July 22nd, we agreed to hold our elections on the first Friday of August, August 5th. That's next week. We have given the time between the last meeting and the first meeting of August for counselors to declare their candidacy or to nominate other members to the um, to conduct a campaign. We affirm the importance of democratic principles in our work and want to ensure a framework wherein the candidates receive majority of the votes who be <clears throat> my apologies, wherein the candidates receiving the majority of the votes become those who will assume the role of co-chair. With the passing of this document, the council will put in place a framework framework for an election to take place and elect an elections chair to facilitate the co-chair elections. Yes. Oh, I forgot to say who's doing it. Um, I wrote this document, but Paul definitely helped me with this and it is endorsed by Dan. So I'll put it in. So, all right, starting out with the whereas is whereas it comes the time of year to facilitate fair and fair elections and the transfer of leadership of our co-chairs. Whereas we as a council voted last week to set our election date for August 5th, 2022, whereas all members of the council must have a fair and equal chance to nominate themselves or another to and to conduct a campaign advocating for their election to the role of chair of our student government. The uh, student government, whereas our student government is a microcosm of a large of a society at large, and if we are to contribute to the construction and maintenance of a just society, we must uphold democracy in our work. This includes our co-chair elections. Therefore, be it hereby for the result, effective immediately we will hold nominations and vote for an elections chair to facilitate the election. This is a temporary appointment that will dissolve after elections are held. People who are running for co-chair positions will not be able to serve as the elections chair. Therefore, be it hereby for the result, the elections chair will announce the candidates who are running for co-chair and select the first candidate to speak. Therefore, be it hereby for the result, the other candidates will lead out in the hall or exit the Zoom meeting essentially at this time. Therefore, be it hereby for the result, the election chair will then allocate five minutes for the first candidate to read a prepare statements on why they should become the co-chair of TSAC. The candidate doesn't have to use the all the allotted time. Thereby, be it hereby for the result. After the candidate is finished with their statement, the chair will then allocate 10 minutes where the members of the council will have time to ask questions of the candidate. The council doesn't have to use all of this allotted time. Thereby, be it hereby for the result. After the question period has ended, the floor will be yielded back to the election chair and the candidate will be led back into the hall. Thereby, hereby further resolved, the chair will then call on the next candidate and repeat the process listed for all the candidates above. There, therefore, be it hereby further resolved, once all candidates have presented their case for becoming co-chair and, and been questioned by a council, voting will begin. There, thereby, be it further resolved, the chair of the elections committee will open a Microsoft poll and put the link in the chat for the council's vote on the candidates who are who presented. The votes will be anonymous. Thereby, be it for the result, once all present council members have voted, the chair will review and tally of the votes. Those with the most votes will be elected to the co-chair positions. In the event of a tie, a runoff will be held. Therefore, be it hereby for the result, the chair will then announce the new co chairs for the upcoming semester, in which their term would start the following week and end, end at the end of the semester. Thereby, be it hereby for the result, and with the announcement of the new co-chairs, the elections will be Election chair will yield back the floor to the presiding co-chair, dissolving the elections chair role in the process, and business will then continue as normal. That is the end of the document I have written. All right, I would like to open the floor for discussion. Let's start with anybody opposed. Anybody opposed to the framework laid out for these co-chair co -chair elections starting in fall? Hearing none. Anybody in support of it? Paul. I would like to speak in support of it. I think Dan's done a really good job with this resolution. I oh, sorry, <laughs> not Dan. I meant to say Mike. Um, but I think you've done a good job with this resolution, Mike. And um, honestly, I want to lend it my full support. Um, I think you know the better we, uh, the sooner we get to this, the better. I think it's a good idea too that our chairs uh, stay in for a full semester. I think it really gives them a, the opportunity to grow and develop as um, as student leaders. And 
Um, it also gives us a, a, a competent chair for the duration of a semester, as opposed to if we were all learning for the first time each month. So um, yeah, I lend my support to this debate. Or I, I lend my support to this uh, resolution and I uh, call the question, uh, assuming there's no other further. Oh, I, I recall that. So. I saw Stephanie's hand and then I recognized myself. Yeah, um, I just want to pay attention to, um, I don't know what line it is, but basically speaking that we're going to be utilizing Microsoft polls, um, which was, which is fine. I just want to be really streamlined with the way that we're voting this year. Um, so I would like to keep it like we use Microsoft poll. I know last year we used Roadrunner link, which we are paying for. Um, so like if we can use it as much as we can, then that would be cool. But if we don't want to use that, we can use Microsoft poll. But I would just like if we if we say this is what we're going to do, then I would just want to use Microsoft poll for everything just so it's easier. That's all that I would want to clarify. Thank you, Stephanie. Mark. I agree with that actually, Stephanie. Um, the, my thought process for it um, was to just put it, put the vote into the chat. Microsoft polls is super easy just to go on there, vote. Um, there's a lot of kind of power how you want to do the, the the settings of each, so make it anonymous, all that stuff. Um, I don't, I've never used Runner Link. I've never, I don't think I've seen it used except for like voting for us for last year's election, but I just want to make it as easy as possible. That's why and I would suggest, or I would say that we should probably do uh, Microsoft polls going forward, but um, that's just my thought for it. So I just wanted to note that um, as um, the current governing documents um, specify the use of Roadrunner link. And so if we are to, um, if we're in agreement on this Microsoft, um, using the Microsoft polls as a substitute, we would need to amend that portion of the document. So I just want to keep, keep uh, bring that to everyone's attention. Um, and I, I motion to call a question on this particular resolution. The chair, the chair recognizes. The Second the motion, yeah. OK, so move on to vote. We are voting on is the resolution. Uh, CR 22-6, a resolution to declare and facilitate fall 22 SGT SAC co-chair elections that was just read. That was just read by Mike. All right. Stephanie. Mike. Yes. James. Yes. Three. Hey. Gabe is an I. Chad, I, Alex. That's Dave. Naomi, are you back? She had clarified earlier in her message that she voted I. Oh, she did vote I. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, James. Paul. I would vote I happily. Recognize myself for an aye vote. Resolution passes. Thank you, Council. I would like to. Um, I would like to motion to nominate Mike for the elections chair. I, I think, given uh, his authorship of this document, he'd be really well well suited for the role. In that, I second that. Um, unless there's no other, um, I would accept that nomination. Um, unless there's any um, pushback or any uh, from anyone, anyone on the council, is anyone opposed to Mike being the nominated chair to this uh, elections chair for the TSAC co-chair elections? Give a second chance for anyone opposed. Would anybody else like to nominate themselves or anybody else? Hearing none. Mike? Call the question. Um, I will second that motion to call the question. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so so through unanimous consent, is anyone opposed to Mike being nominated to the chair of this elections council for TSAC without a vote? Anyone opposed? Hearing none. Okay, now we move on to the seconded motion and we vote on this elections framework resolution. We did? We vote on it. All right. It passed. Passed. And Mike, you're it. You're on to the next order of business. CR 22-7. Resolution condemning uh, the U.S. Supreme Court decision in Oklahoma v. Castro. Kiarta, written by Paula Naomi. Naomi, are you back? Yes. Floor is yours. Sweet. Um, give me a second. So I had someone come to the door, so I had to uh, handle that. Um, a motion. We read the um, we read the resolution. Yes, I'm opening that now as we speak. I don't know why this is like that. Okay, perfect. I'll second the motion. All right. Oh, let me um, turn my second that motion. Right. Rec Chair recognizes the motion to to read and the second to of that main motion to read the uh, resolution. Amy, go ahead. Okay. Alrighty. So the Student Adv Advocacy Council of Metropolitan State University. This is a resolution condemning the U.S. Supreme. C I'm sorry. CR 22-7 is a resolution of condemning the U.S. Supreme Court's decision in Oklahoma versus Castro um, dash Huerta. Written by Paul and myself and um, endorsed by Mike Warner and Dan. So we, um, <clears throat> the Student Advocacy Council, oops, hold on. Um, <laughs> of why and the what. So we, the reason why we decided to do this is kind of, um, Paul reached out to me and was like, hey, um, you know, I don't know if you've heard about this, but I think we should kind of do something about it. And I completely agreed with him. And this is more or less just to kind of express the concerns of what's going on because to our people right now this isn't something um you know that's just like oh it's just a court case like no this is them infringing upon our rights and our sovereignty again so this is much like in i guess the best way to relate it to um i guess people the situation is roe versus wade it's not just a matter of a court case it's literally our rights um, and if they get away with this, then who knows what's next? So this is something that doesn't need to be swept underneath the rug and we need to take action. Um, so yeah, whereas the student government, the Student Advocacy Council, Council of Metropolitan State University of Denver stands in solidarity with the indigenous peoples of the world in their struggle against colonialism. Whereas from 1776 to 1871, the US Congress ratified more than 500 treaties with indigenous nations. Whereas a provision in the 1871 Indian Appropriations Act withdrew federal recognition of indigenous nations as separate political entities contracted through treaties made with the, uh, made with the United States. Whereas this act abolished treaty making and it was established that no Indian nation, I'm sorry, quote, no Indian nation or tribe within the territory of the United States shall be acknowledged or recognized as an independent nation, tribe, or power with whom the United States may contract by treaty. This was a colonialist appending of the national sovereignty of the original inhabitants of this land. Whereas this act is in violation of the United States Declaration of Rights of Indigenous Peoples, um, also known as UNDRIP, UNDRIP, which was adopted on the 107th plenary meeting on the 13th of September 2000. Um, whereas the UNDRIP acknowledges that the, quote, the Charter of the United Nations, the International Covent of Economic, and Social, and Cultural Rights, and the International Covent on Civil and Political Rights, as well as the Vienna Declaration and Program of Action, affirmed the fundamental importance of the right to self, oops, self-determination of all peoples by virtue of which they freely determine their political status and freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. Definitely didn't live up to that. Um, whereas in the United States, more than 3 million people are incarcerated in the largest prison systems in the world. Whereas indigenous peoples and oppressed peoples are disproportionately incarcerated and persecuted by law enforcement. Whereas within this system, indigenous people are the group most likely to be murdered and harassed by law enforcement and experienced high rates of incarceration. Whereas 
This proves that the system is inherently racist and disciplines politically disfranchise people to keep them oppressed and prevent them from challenging racist institutions like prisons, police, and laws that maintain the status quo. Whereas racist disciplinary institutions contribute to the continued dispossession and death of indigenous peoples and life ways in North America. Whereas access to quality education, healthcare, social services, and housings are fundamental human rights. Whereas, however, in almost every quality of life standard, Indigenous people have the worst access to adequate educational opportunities, healthcare, social services, and housing in North America. Whereas, the Metropolitan State University of Denver has made historic moves to provide tuition-free attendance for Indigenous students. We are proud to stand with our university in making this decision. Whereas, Indigenous people also have higher rates of unemployment on and off reservation than any group in the United States. Access to meaningful standards of living is historically guaranteed under many treaty rights, but have been constantly ignored and consistently ignored and unevenly applied across ge ge geography and region. Oh, one moment. Whereas indigenous LGBTQIA plus and two-spirit individuals experience persecution, killing, torture, and rape within indigenous nations within dominant society. The process of colonization and uh, heteropatriarchy imposed binary gender roles, nuclear family, nuclear family structures, and male-dominated hierarchies that are fundamentally at odds with indigenous customary laws so, and social organizations, where LGBTQIA plus and two-spirit individuals historically held positions of privilege and esteem. The effect of the system for indigenous LGBTQIA plus and two-spirit individuals is violent. Whereas we experience the destruction and violation of our non-human relatives wrought by militarization, toxic dumping and contamination and resource extraction as violence. Human perpetuate this violence against our non-human relatives. We will be unable to live, our, live on our lands and continue as relatives, uh, relatives rec recognized by the ancestors of this violence is allowed to continue. Whereas the overturning of almost 200 years of Supreme Court precedent recognizing the rights of tribal nations to self-govern without being infringed by the United States. Whereas the following is land acknowledgement from MSU Denver, it reads, MSU Denver acknowledges the indigenous people and land of the Auraria and broader Denver area. We honor and acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories and ancestral homelands of the Cheyenne and Arapaho nations. We acknowledge the land and history of the space we are fortunate to gather in today. This area was also the site of trade, hunting, gathering, and healing for many other indigenous nations. The Lakota, Ute, um, Kiowa, Comanche, Apache, Shoshone, and others. 48 tribes have called this land home. We recognize the indigenous peoples as the original stewards of the land, water, plants, and animals who called this place home. Let us also acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal of, the ter of this territory. We recognize that US public policy has been used to displace indigenous communities, erode tribal nation sovereignty, and forcibly assimilate indigenous individuals into US society. We respect the many diverse indigenous people still connected to this land on which we gather. We pay our respects to them and give thanks to all the tribal and ancestors of this place, tribal nations and ancestors of this place. We also acknowledge the labor of enslaved Africans and their descendants who worked this stole, stolen land for the colonists who continue to dis disproportionately face economic oppression, racism, violence, and exploitation. Whereas, the student government of MSU stands with our university in making this acknowledgement, and in the spirit of realizing it on our campus, we are united for the following. Therefore, it hereby further resolved, we, the student government of MSU Denver, condemn the Supreme Court decision in Oklahoma versus Castro Huerta for the act of political disfranchisement, disenfranchisement that it is. The decision place displayed a colonial disregard of the sovereignty of indigenous nations. We ask that the university join us in the condemnation. Therefore, hereby further resolved, we will form the Indigenous Student Resource Committee, ISRC, for the advancement of Indigenous peoples and culture. Therefore, it be, um, th therefore it be hereby further resolved, we demand the universal enforcement and application of services to improve the standard of living for Indigenous peoples, pursuant to provisions in treaties and the UNDRIP, whether such peoples reside on or off reservations and trust lands. This must extend to the application of services on our university. North America is our home and we demand more than mere survival. We demand the conditions to thrive. 
Therefore, it be hereby further resolved, we demand an end to all university support sponsorships or partnerships with any public or private operation, firm, company, entity that through damage to the environment pose a threat to the biosphere or threaten the sovereignty of the Apache Nation, Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes, Lakota tribe, Pueblo tribes, Shoshone tribe, Ute Nation, Comanche tribe, Kiowa tribe or the Navajo tribe or any other indigenous nations over their lands. Um, it's actually a uh, Dene, sorry about that. Therefore, it be hereby further resolved, the Committee Indigenous Students Resource Committee will also be tasked with the investigation and maintenance of the ongoing demands of this resolution. Oh, hold on. Therefore, it be hereby further resolved, the Indigenous Student Resource Committee will be tasked with working with the university, tribal elders, and Indigenous community members to determine a relevant set of standards when considering the renaming a major building, area, park, or street on campus working with the Aurora Higher Education Center, if they must, promote the everyday recognition of the genocide and forced displacement of the original inhabitants of this land. Let us acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from this territory. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. So um, one note on there that I forgot to um, make, and I think everyone needs to know about this because it's very important to me, um, is that I forgot to take out uh, Navajo in there, and that's my fault because um, I didn't correct Paul on that, but it's Dene because the people who named the, us Navajo is that it means thief, and we were not thieves. They were thieves of us. So that's also something I kind of wanted to let you guys know. Um, and for those of you, I kind of should have went more on this on the background, so it's my first time reading one of these, but um, the, I do believe in Oklahoma, the case is stating a non-native man on native, uh, on reservation land had committed a child against, or committed a crime against a child who was native. So therefore we would have had rights to the case and the state should not have had control over it by any means. But of course, they're trying to argue that and take away those rights. And this would mean that he probably wouldn't get even prosecuted at that point for the crimes against the child. Um, so that's kind of what's going on. And this is very important to me. And I would just like to also express my gratitude for Paul for writing this up and uh, working with me and the NISA members to really make sure that, um, you know, this is stated out proportion or um, appropriately and to the highest extent. So thank you for that. Thank you, Naomi. Paul? I just wanted to offer a quick and friendly amendment that we change Navajo to Diné. Um, I was told once that I, I'm surprised I wrote this in. I uh, slip of ignorance on my part. But Diné, as I understand it, also means the people. So I wholeheartedly suggest that we amend it to Diné in support of the people um, and that we vote on the amended document. Um, Naomi, if you're willing to accept this amendment, um, so we changed the wording on that. Yes, I second that. Um, I put it in the chat. I should have said yes instead of agreed, but yes. Um, and also just in case you guys know, most languages for, um, uh, Nate or indigenous cultures, the name of their tribe usually means in their language, the people, which is pretty cool, but yeah. So awesome. Thank you, Naomi, Paul. So is there any discussion to the amended resolution that Naomi wrote to include Dine, D-I-N-E, instead of Navajo. Discussion against it? This is for the whole motion. For the whole motion, not the amendment. This is for the whole motion. The whole amended motion. The whole amended motion, which instead of Navajo has Dine to recognize the true name. I'm glad I'm seeing no opposition. Does anybody want to add anything in the floor? Paul, go ahead. I just wanted to quickly speak on um, part of why I wrote this um, and, and partnered with Naomi on um, getting it to the council here today. Um, I understand we have a land acknowledgement at this university and I've heard it at many meetings. You know, I've sat there and I've listened to it. Um, and I understand we give tuition to indigenous students or we, we give them tuition free attendance. Um, beyond that, I, um, I fail to see the land acknowledgement truly lived like we need to both talk the talk and walk the walk, right? We can't just say we're on stolen land. We need to like recognize that and do things about it, right? And so part of this resolution is to work to create a, a um, you know, a committee that can do that work and formally recognize uh, this council's stance on, the, on, on, on this decision 
And to repeat what Naomi said about the actual case, you know, this is saying that, you know, it's not up to, um, you know, tribal police to conduct investigations and, um, you know, uh, the doling out of justice over their own lands and their own people. It would instead be put on the state, the state that displaced them, right? And we're supposed to expect the state that displaced these people and confine them to reservations to meaningfully go out justice to um, to an indigenous victim of a uh, non-indigenous uh, perpetrator. I, I don't buy it. And I personally think that is why this sort of power ought to be rested with um, the indigenous communities themselves as it, as it was before this horrendous Supreme Court decision. So that's all I have to say in support of this motion. I wholeheartedly support this. As do I. Um, and Stephanie, to, you know, one kind of a side note, you know, there's certain ways we could hold them accountable. You know, I'm certain some of the companies that the board of trustees work for, I'm sure some of those companies have money invested in oil companies and some things like this. There's a good way to hold people accountable at the higher level is see what companies they work for and pressure them to pressure their companies or step down or things such as this. That would be more than just hot air as well. So um, that's an idea. Um, but if that's all of the discussion. All the question, the uh, business of the day. So is there a motion to vote on this? May or is it a motion to read it? Yeah. Well, yes. To read it. So now we just call the question. So we vote on it. Okay. Call the question. Is there a second on the vote? Oh, we don't have to. This is calling the motion. Well, we've, we've already, already, already okay. agreed to move to a vote. All right. Mike. Yes. Stephanie. James. Yes. Bree. Aye. Gabe, aye. Chad, aye. Alex. Aye. Bradley. Naomi. Aye. Paul. I am pleased to unite with the council on voting yes on this resolution. I recognize myself for an I vote unanimously passed by this council. Thank you, council. Thanks, guys. Awesome. OK, so on to section. Section four old business. Nothing on the agenda. Yes, I agree with that, Stephanie. I think it should be brought up there as well, loudly, but in a nice, quiet voice. And now that we vote on that, I just called a point of order, called to order the business of the day. We'll pursue the rest of the agenda. All right, so we move on to old business. None now, so it's per our agenda. Section five, public comment. Is anybody from the public here? Ready to comment and share your thoughts, concerns, ideas, questions. If so, we just ask that you put your name in the chat and say you're here for public comment and then speak up. Hearing none, going twice. All right, hearing none. So per, per agenda, we move to join the meeting. Is anybody opposed? All right. Thanks, everybody. Meeting adjourned. Have a great Thanks, week. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.